Welcome back to this episode of Sustainable Energy. Today we are looking at ways to make our cities greener. Stefano Boeri is one of the pioneers in urban forestry planning and now collaborating with the UN on future projects. In 2014, he built the world's first vertical forest in Milan and that's where we caught up with him. Vertical forest is a very simple thing. It's a way to concentrate in a very small urban surface, thousands of plants. My name is Stefano Boeri. Uh, I am an architect. I'm the author of this uh, high-rise building. Uh, I'm teaching at Politecnico di Milano. At, at this moment, I'm also president of the Triennale of Milano. I remember where that I was in, in Dubai. I was observing this basically 200 skyscrapers, all covered by glass, and well, knowing how glass is reflecting, mirroring the sunlight, I decided that it was necessary to imagine a new kind of high-rise building with a sad cover, not by glass or mineral material, but by leaves. I gathered a bunch of experts, and then a bunch of botanists, ethologists, and we started to analyze all the difficulties and the possible obstacles. It was amazing because it was, for me, also a way to uh, learn a lot uh, from other disciplinary fields. We have here 21,000 plants, basically. More in detail is 200, 250 trees, 4,500 shrubs of so different size and uh, 15,000 plants of different uh, dimension and nature. So it's equivalent of uh, three hectares, 30,000 square meters of a real forest in a very small surface of an urban center of a super dense urban environment. I've been living at the Bosco Verticale since its opening five years ago. It doesn't feel like we're living right in the middle of busy Milan, where everything goes quite fast. Having these plants right on our terrace, real trees, has certainly had a positive impact on my life. It brings temperature down in the summer, and it feels like these plants have generated a microclimate. It's very pleasant. In the winter, we use less heating thanks to this greenhouse effect, and in the summer, we use less air conditioning because the air is cooler. So it's a very uh, complex ecosystem of humans, plants, insects, birds. We have more than 20 species of birds that are nesting. And when you have to deal with living nature, as we are doing here, you never know perfectly the, well, not simply the, the risk, but also the uh, results of what you do. So this is an experiment. This is the first building who is really sensible to the change of uh, seasons. It's a mutant building. improve the quality of life in the city of Milan, we need uh, more forest, more trees in the city, outside the city. We need uh, to build now green belt all around Milan and also within the city of Milan to have uh, more fresh uh, air, to remove pollution. A vertical forest is uh, an effective symbol of the willingness to change by Milan and by the cities. A symbol that needs to be followed by change in the wall of the houses and the building because we cannot wait to build new houses for a fight against climate change. The concept of connection of green environment is crucial for the future. We do our best to imagine new cities that from the beginning they have the forest and the cities together. So the living nature together with uh, human behaviors. Well, you've seen the report, an ambitious project. So has Stefano Boeri uh, set up a trend that can be replicated elsewhere? 
I definitely do think so. I think the, the symbolic value of bringing trees into new ways, new forms into the city is very important. Of course, we have to think about things like sustainability and making this also applicable on a wider scale. But I know that uh, there's a lot of effort being put into projects like this and see how we can, uh, can improve cities also in this way. So it takes several years for trees to grow large and cast shade. So when does this planting should take place? So I think it's very important that trees are given space. We know that soil, we call soil volume, is really important. So the trees have to have space underground, maybe even more so than overground. And then, of course, trees will have to have time to, to develop. So you, you won't have instant trees. You'll have to take the time to make sure they grow up and then they provide the benefits that we want to, uh, to get from them. A recent study by Boston University has shown that urban trees grow quickly but die faster than rural trees. How do we address this issue? It's a little bit like comparing it with children eating just chocolate, right? They grow very fast, but they may be not so healthy. So I think we have to address the health of trees all the way from when we plant them in enough volume, but also maintain them in a good way. Uh, and trees really require long-term perspective, watering, proper maintenance. So we have to take care of our trees in a much better way and look at it as a forest ecosystem in the city. See those links and see those uh, benefits that trees have growing together. What percentage of a city should an urban green space typically cover, you know, to preserve biodiversity and to ensure that the city is more sustainable? So many cities will have very different uh, cover depending where you are in the world, but uh, you would have to have at least 20-30% of tree canopy, I would say, in most places to have those benefits, have the cooling effects to bring trees to, uh, to everywhere where people live. Uh, but I said, where, it depends where you, if you're in a desert climate or you're in a, in a place like here where the trees <laughs> grow so well. What produces the best results in combating climate change and saving energy? What other nature-based solutions can be used? I still think that trees are a crucial part of that. We know canopy cover, raising canopy cover in the city will really help you cool down the city. But it's vegetation in general, having enough big parks, cool islands in your city. So in general, vegetation, I think, should play a really big role in this, uh, in this question. Do you think town planners and policymakers will answer the UN's call to build more urban forests? I certainly hope so, and I think there are signs of it. Uh, we see more cities taking this seriously, but I think the main problem is still that many policymakers don't see green space as something which is essential. It's still icing on the cake. So as soon as we see its infrastructure that we need in all cities, I think we'll see a dramatic change in how we plan and develop our cities towards the future. Thank you, Professor Cecil Kunan Naik. It was great being here on the campus at the University of British Columbia. Thank you, Asha. And that's how something as simple as planting trees can be an energy-saving nature-based solution to reduce carbon emissions. So that's it for this edition of Sustainable Energy. If you'd like to comment on this program, then do get in touch on Twitter at CNBC Energy. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, goodbye. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.